Hello and welcome back to my console review selection of my channel. Today we're going to focus on the Sega Saturn, why some revere it as innovative and why it ultimately failed and many other things. But let's just start with the Saturn itself. If you've never seen one of these things, they're fairly cheap. They go for about, uh, they're probably about $10 more than what I paid for this. I bought this back in 2003 for exactly $40 out the door with a game. Today, you could probably find it for 50 bucks out the door, you know, with everything. Um, it did have a few unique features to it. It is, it's still, it's one of the few games that still had a reset button. 90s loved reset buttons, not sure why. Most game systems had some type of reset button. That opens up that. You can see on the inside, ooh, ah, yeah, it's a bit dirty. This thing's been sitting around a while, but I have just tested it. It does work. Nice little cartridge slot, and no, that is not for games or whatnot. Um, kind of silly, but it's actually for a backup RAM, and I'll get to why that's so important in a little bit. Uh, that's a controller port, way different than what the Sega Genesis was. Brief history, back in the 90s, what I would like to call the second renaissance of gaming, so to speak. There were two major players, Sega and Nintendo, obviously. Then there was all these other systems that almost killed the video game industry in itself. You probably had, by the end of 95, you had like six or seven consoles either coming out or, uh, or already out. Most notably, obviously, you had Genesis that was current. By 95 in Japan and in the U.S., I guess, early 95, you had the Saturn... Also, you had the Panasonic 3DO, the Atari, uh, the Atari Jaguar, the add-on Atari Jaguar CD. You still had Sega CD. You had the, uh, God damn it, I want to say the uh, 32X. Yeah, you had the Sega 32X, and there was a few like Neo Geo CD, uh, and just an amazing amount of fucking consoles. And Panasonic, I think I might have said Panasonic 3DO. I can't think off the top of my head, but you had an amazing number of consoles that were out flooding the market at the time. And this was kind of thrown in the middle of it because Sega at that time was like adding on the Genesis on life support. You had the Genesis, then you had the Sega CD, then you had the Sega 32X. You add that all together, it was bigger than this monstrosity. Um, and it really did extend the life of it, but at the same time... You know, these add-ons, they weren't cheap. They were two, three hundred dollars. Now, I know what people are saying as far as the PlayStation VR that's coming out in the fall. That is four hundred dollars. That's insane. Currently, right now, that is more expensive than if you were to buy the system. That's pre-Neo price. Neo's like four hundred bucks. But it, it, to think about that, that was kind of the price. I mean, these were different add-ons. The PlayStation camera, you know, you're talking sixty bucks. You know, this little thing you're talking maybe a hundred. You know, when the Sega CD was launched, that was, I believe, two, three hundred dollars for just that. And then uh, when the 32X was launched, that was like another two hundred bucks. People weren't buying it. Sega was killing themselves left and right over hardware. And then they came out with this to basically be the successor. The technical successor of the Genesis is the Saturn. Um, even though they had the Genesis on life support with every other thing known to man. But they had some innovative things with this. First of all, this was the first gaming... Well, if you want to consider it technically second gaming system to be online. Sega Genesis did have an online feature called Sega TV. Or some shit like that. Or Sega Channel. That's what it was. This had the same type of feature. You plug it in there. But it was only available in Japan. And it was the same type of thing. It was pay-to-play type stuff. So that was pretty inventive. Obviously, this is the, first time, the second time Sega decided to go with the discs. Um, but this time, th with this system, they, they fucked it up completely. With it. There was a couple of things. First of all, they made the system very quick, which isn't a bad thing, but they made it so technically, or should I say, so technologically far ahead of everyone else, no one wanted to program for it or because it was hell to program on. It actually featured two main processors, a dual-core main processor, which back in the day was nearly unheard of. Let's say one would control one character and the other processor would control the other. But they shared the same cache memory, so each processor couldn't run that same cache at the same time. So they w didn't really like that, but it does look beautiful. I just plugged this in and played Virtual Fighter. And that's 
the game blew me away, first of all, because I played it on a modern television, and the game feels and runs spectacular. Um, it, it looks great for being the technology that it is, but it's such a waste that that's what the technology, that such a waste that they weren't able to develop that, as far as that were to go. There we have the Sega Saturn controller. Followed the Genesis quite nicely. It had your ABC and your X, you know, just the bigger Genesis, but it had these nifty shoulder buttons, which we all know they stole that from, you know, everybody was going shoulder buttons after the Super Nintendo came out and their controller was very good. Um, again, there's a controller port. Very, very different than what Sega, than what anybody was used to saying, seeing Sega do for the longest time. They got rid of the serial port and added their own nice touch to it. I'm assuming essentially so that people would have to buy that controller for this specific thing. Because essentially the controller is the same aside from the shoulder buttons. And we also have, well, this kind of came along with it. Obviously this was their little AV cables. Um, there was a, I can't think of the RF modular one to this, but I only had the AV one when I bought it. But let's take a look at the back of the system. This is where things get a little interesting as far as that were to go. Um, it had your standard thing, and it actually had another port out. I want to say that was to connect different game or connect different systems up to. A lot of systems doing it. PlayStation had it. You know, there's your RF thing. There's your standard. There's your power socket. Now, what's notable about this is you're going to say that looks a little more modern because it is. The power supply is inside. You don't have that bulky brick that most of the other consoles had, and actually fit nicely. The biggest issue is right here. If you know what this is, then uh, let's put it this way. It don't if you here's a tip for Sega Saturn collectors if you buy one of these systems immediately say it immediately buy a new battery because this is where all your saves and all your information is stored on that's right it had it didn't have flash memory it had battery backup memory kind of like the old um, Nintendo games did so once that goes dead all your saves are wiped out regardless um, this was another expansion bay too there was something else supposed to be in there I can't really see it in this light. Probably picked a bad spot. Now oh, there you go. There was something else that it could actually go in there, so it could expand further, but they never actually utilized it. So, but that is one thing, is replace that immediately. That's been dead for years. I don't really care too much about the games I have. All they have is like Daytona USA, Virtual Cop, Virtual Fighter, and Knights. So, I mean, that was a couple other games too, but... You know, nothing I would really want to save on. But here's where this comes into play. You could buy an add-on, like, backup RAM, essentially, is what it was called. Um, you buy that, slap that in there, save all your, back up all your saves onto that. So that way, when that battery dies, no harm, no foul. But that was the biggest draw, is the fact that these, in my opinion, weren't widely available. I, it's hard tracking these down today. These, they're not that expensive. But, I mean, if you're collecting for it, it'll cost you about 20 or 30 bucks. Um, which, for the most part, most people buy the one that hacked one, like the Game Shark version of it. So that way you can play, you know, burn games on here and shit like that. Because the copy protection was a little bit more thorough with this system than it was with the Dreamcast. Um, essentially was. But, I mean, as far as that were to go, the system itself, you know, it, it runs smooth. But it's only if the hardware is utilizing it. The only third-party game... I only have two third-party games out of my five or six games I have for this system. is Resident Evil 1 and NHL 97. Resident Evil 1, I found at a yard sale about 10, 12 years ago for two bucks. Picked it up. And NHL 2007, 2007, fucking 97. That was... I found I bought that when I bought the system because it was either that game or a couple other shitty games I really didn't want to have, and I just said, you know, I just want a game just to fucking pick it up and try it out. Um, the menus of this thing are really fucking weird too. It, it's it's hard to describe it. I really I should probably hook this thing up and just fire it up to show you. Um, I'm I'm not gonna do a direct link with my shit. It's the my hapage has been kind of running fucking iffy on me. It doesn't like to do things that I necessarily want to do. I'm not very happy with it for the most part, but I think I will try and turn this on just to show you the menu, because it is really fucking weird. Um, it's very futuristic looking, but, I mean, if you were to compare to it at the PlayStation and all the other shit, it definitely, it just feels, it's definitely very Sega-ish. 
I, I, that's the only way I can think to put it. Um, but aside from that, the biggest, aside from the downfalls I already said, is the battery backup, which died. You know, if you didn't have the cartridge, your saves were gone. This thing actually launched before the PlayStation, because Sega knew that the PlayStation was going to fucking destroy them. It, it was one of those things where they wanted to get their hardware out there first. That's what most people had. The only problem was most third-party developers didn't want to develop for this. A lot of them were saying it was a little bit easier to develop on the PlayStation. You had the Nintendo 64 that was coming out within the next year. So a lot of people were working on a lot of that stuff. To my, in my opinion, 2000, 1996 was the nail in the coffin for this system, even though they discontinued it in 98. 96 was the nail in the coffin for a lot of systems. Um, by I'll say this, by the start of 1996, you had very few systems that I mentioned. 3DO, that was dead. Jaguar and Jaguar CD, that was dead. Um, Neo Geo, you know, I'm talking the states wide more or less. Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, that was dead. I mean, if you were old enough to remember, think back to the stores, going to Walmart, you know, Best Buy, um, Comp USA, any places that really sold this type of stuff, you know, media play, you didn't see too many of those other systems by 96. They were pretty much virtually all gone. You know, it's like the gimmick was up. And the only left console manufacturers that were really left is you saw the Saturn, you saw, you know, PlayStation, and you saw the 60, Nintendo 64 when that launched. Actually, by the time the Nintendo 64, you know, by the time the N96 happened, this system was pretty much obsolete. Hey, doggy. Um, so, it, it this system was great, it was inventive, and it did bring the power of the internet. It had, <laughs> I don't know what to really say about this system other than it was powerful, but there's a point to where you're either going to price yourself out of the market or you're going to make it so complicated to get it to work the way you want that no one's going to want to work on it or develop games for it. You know, it's like if it takes you, let's say it takes you retrospectively about a, a year to crank out a PlayStation 1 game. Well, it might take you a year and a half to crank out that same game on the Saturn because you got to tweak it to work perfectly with the system. So, as far as that were to go, yeah. Sega, they shot themselves in the foot. And like I said, by 98, this thing was dead because, well, guess what ha also happened in 98 that Sega shot themselves in the foot and which is for another day and another time, they shot themselves in the foot with the Sega Dreamcast. Who would have thunk it? Um, the Sega Dreamcast was launched and to, it, it was actually, it, it launched to a, a success, but it ultimately failed, to, again, to, due to third-party support. But that's another story in itself. But this was more just a quick little look at the Saturn. Um, let me see if I can get the menu fired up. But this is what the screen that greet. Let's put it this way: if you're if you're a Saturn collector and you turn on your Saturn one day and you're greeted with this screen, I'm sorry to say your battery's toast. Um, let's do English. And it's gonna say set date and time. Let's do today's date. Let's do fucking eight. 20. This thing goes all this thing goes clear beyond the Dreamcast spectrum. I doubt the people who designed this ever thought that this was a lie. This would be a lie, you know, to see this date. Uh sure. Let's next. Don't. Oh. Yeah, the Saturn. Fuck it. How the hell do exit? Yes. All right, start. <laughs> I can't legitimately fucking figure this shit out. All right, that resets it. That doesn't do anything. Oh, there. We're gonna say it's 1994. It's gonna wish it was that year. Ah, the Dreamcast. There's Dreamcast. Fucking Saturn. 1995. And this is the main menu. Yeah, that's probably a lot better. This is the main menu. Yeah. Skip forward. It basically plays CDs. Let's see. Hide controls. And you basically just get this giggling looking shit. I just... 
rocks back and forth. And spirals off the screen and takes off. And I guess it never comes back. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so it so that so if you if, if that looked familiar, that's kind of like the PlayStation 2 function where you can kind of just watch the background. You know, I guess that's what they're trying to do. The advanced controls isn't really anything. It's just date, time, you know, scan intros, basically scanning that, clear all settings, repeat the song. Shuffle tracks, no, and that is not play solitaire. It literally just shuffles tracks. Um, adjust surround. You can adjust the surround soundness of your speakers on your freaking Saturn. Yeah, not the greatest. And I can't seem to fucking no, start, does it? Program sequence. Adjust vocals. They did so much shit to this that didn't need to be done. Um, basic controls. Yeah, that is it. it. And then it's just that CG, you know, if you had a uh, karaoke, more or less, is what this is. You can set it to this channel and all that shit. So, and then system settings. Oh, yeah. That's the system settings. You know, that little, it looks like the eject button. That's system settings. Now we can go there. Clock. And you're going to see memory manager. There's absolutely nothing in here because there's nothing to remove because everything's been removed prior. Um, other settings. Let's see what other settings this had. You could change button layout. Stereo. Like, yeah, how most games have it to where you... <laughs> most games you could choose stereo or mono. You know, that's the game's choice, software choice. Here, you can choose it not only in the, like, the GUI menu... But you can also, you know, choose it in the game. So it's almost made no it's sound effects. You know, you kind of want that. Um, language. Basically, as soon as you turn it on, English would be primary language. And the clock. Yeah. I'm not adjusting to today's data anymore. But look at that. The NTSC version 4. This is like... The first, as far as I'm aware, the first and only version that I've ever seen, you know, 4v1.00a. But, uh, yeah, not sure what else to say about the Sega Saturn, other than that's it. Oh, and if you want to see the intro, this is how the Sega Saturn introduces itself to the audience. Let's see, hit reset there. Supposed to show you awesomeness. Boom. And then you're back here again. Well, on that note, it, like I said, this is just a very quick introduction as far as that were to go. I don't feel like getting into depths or anything else, but the Sega Saturn is was definitely the one of the biggest failures of the of Sega's life. Now a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, they went out with a, a Dreamcast. Yes, they did, but the Saturn was actually worse of a disaster and worse of a mess because there was a couple of things, like I said, programming was an issue and fucking the PlayStation just murdered it. PlayStation, the PlayStation already, this already had a leg up, but as soon as the PlayStation was launched, it had some stiff competition and by the time the Nintendo 64 launched, fuck it, the system was pretty much dead. Um, yeah, they finally discontinued it in 98 in here in the States. But this system was officially... Uh, I Most people you ask, this system was pretty much dead before it even left the starting gate. Um, yeah, they're all there. Launch games were rather weak. Trust me, I never got and understood that game fucking nights. It was fucking retarded. I, I mean, some of you may enjoy it, but I never could get used to the control. It just felt weird. Let's put it this way. Virtual Fighter had some legs to stand on. That actually has okay controls, fluid controls for the most part. But nights just felt clunky. And it just looked horrible, in my opinion. Like, they were trying to do way too much, way too soon. And had Sega just said, you know what, maybe we'll just ride the Sega CD out and we'll skip the 32-bit generation. And they just, if they just decided to skip from 95 until when they released the Dreamcast, it might have been a different story. 
um, because they pissed away a lot of money on this thing, and that's basically about it. Once they pissed away that money, the Dreamcast was their last hurrah, and it sold fairly well, but again, third-party publishers didn't want anything to do with it. But on that note, thank you, thank you so very much for watching, and have a nice day.